in this episode, I will take you to the Valley of the Kings to see a discovery happened after 83 years and three months and six days of the discovery of the tomb of, of Tutankhamun. The valley was silent for more than 83 years, but suddenly a major discovery happened. A new adventure after King Tut. And you'll join me to see this amazing discovery. The beginning of the spells of coming forth by day, of exalting and glorifying, of coming forth and going down into the underworld, and speaking spells of power in beautiful Amente. Valley of the Kings final home to all the greatest Egyptian pharaohs. The kings of the new kingdom, which roughly lasted from 1500 to 1100 BC, were buried here, in tombs inserted into the cliffs or hidden under the stone valley floor. began their long journey towards eternal life. Over the centuries, these rocks have only revealed a handful of the secrets they hold, but so much still lies buried under the sand of this arid Egyptian desert. I gave the word. Amid silence, the huge slab rose. The light shone into the sarcophagus. A cry of wonder escaped our lips. So magnificent was the sight before our eyes. The golden face of the boy king. On the 4th of November, 1922, British archaeologist Howard Carter uncovered the staircase, which leads to the tomb of Tutankhamun. It was a sensational discovery. For the first time, archaeologists were entering into a tomb that had never been violated. When they demolished the entrance wall, they laid eyes on a sight so magnificent that it took their breath away. In four small chambers, more than 5,000 fabulous handmade objects were stowed, along with the mummy of the pharaoh, Tutankhamun. For 80 years, archaeologists continue to dig in the Valley of the Kings, recording any discoveries they make and studying the open tombs in more detail. But none of the findings can be compared to what Howard Carter discovered. Until in 2006, Egyptology is catapulted back into the limelight due to an extraordinary discovery. All major discoveries happen by accident. You never know what the sand of Egypt may hide of secrets. In February 2006, only 14 meters away from the tomb of Tutankhamun, a team of American archaeologists uncover a new secret in the valley, a tomb which has remained undisturbed for thousands of years. Only today, a cachette of mummies has been found in front of the tomb of Tutankhamun. The tomb, discovered by chance, is renamed KV-63, based on the naming convention for discoveries in that area, which assigns the initials KV, King's Valley, followed by a progressive number. Otto Schaden, who heads the team of archaeologists, opens a new chapter in the history of the valley. Well, the discovery of the new tomb was the result of a long series of actions and excavations connected with the tomb of Amun Mesa, tomb 10, which is right nearby. 
The entrance to the tomb opens out onto a five and a half meter deep vertical shaft. At the bottom of the shaft, there lies a room which is miraculously intact. Inside it, there are 28 jars and piled in a corner, seven coffins covered in black resin. The coffins have no seals, no collars, or any other identifying marks. Which dynasty do they belong to? Who were they for? Are the KV-63 and the KV-62, the tomb of Tutankhamun, connected in any way? Since its discovery, there have been many theories about what KV-63 could possibly be. Was it a royal mummy cache? Would the archaeologists find the bodies of some of the missing New Kingdom pharaohs at the bottom? So which pharaohs were buried in the Valley of the Kings? And why was that valley specifically chosen as their burial place? The Valley of the Kings is a place of mystery and magic. It was the pharaohs of the 18th dynasty in around 1500 BC who elected this remote wadi on the west bank of the Nile, just a few kilometers from ancient Thebes, as their eternal resting place. A custom which lasted throughout the New Kingdom, up until around 1100 BC and the 20th dynasty. Pharaohs considered their tomb to be almost more important than the royal palace. Fitting burial in a suitable location was the only way in which the kings could be guaranteed a safe journey into the afterlife and a happy life after their death. A number of specific factors led to the choice of this particular site. The valley is dominated by a hill, El Kurn, which is shaped like a pyramid. To the ancient Egyptians, a pyramid symbolized the sun's rays. Additionally, the valley had only one access point and could therefore be easily guarded and defended from tomb robbers. Ancient Egyptians did not believe death existed. The valley is a eulogy to light, to the sun that plunges into the underworld and is reborn triumphant. The walls of these tombs, containing several chambers, had inscriptions and paintings showing the scenes and texts that would accompany the dead kings into the afterlife and guaranteed them eternal life. The tombs were filled with objects used in everyday life, such as beds, chests, chairs and clothes, as well as objects destined for use in the afterlife, such as funerary figurines called ushaptis, ritual statues, charms and fetishes. Inside the coffin, there was a papyrus scroll which contained a series of prayers and spells that were supposed to guide and protect the soul during its journey through the underworld, the so-called Book of the Dead. These texts enabled the soul to frighten off any demons who might try to place obstacles along the way. I am yesterday. And I know tomorrow. I am able to be born again. I am the divine, hidden soul. Most scholars believe that the first king to have a tomb in the Valley of the Kings was Tutmos I, the third king of the 18th dynasty. His chief architect, Ineni, boasted that he had built a hidden tomb for his king without anyone noticing. It could be KV-20. Over the years, the royal tombs become larger and more complex. The sequence of tombs in the Valley of the Kings was interrupted during the late 18th dynasty by the heretical pharaoh Akhenaten who had his tomb built close to the city he had founded, Amana. Tutankhamun returned to Thebes and had his tomb built in the Valley of the Kings. When he died, he was about 19 years old and his tomb had not yet been completed. His successor, Ai, quickly had him buried in another smaller tomb. KV-57, tomb of Horemhed, the last king of the 18th dynasty is one of the most beautiful tombs in the valley. 
For the first time, scenes and texts were first engraved and then painted over. Many of these works were never finished, and today we can see the procedures used by the artisans who carried out their tasks. The kings of the 19th and 20th dynasties, from 1300 to around 1100 BC, were buried in magnificent tombs. As the new kingdom fell into decline, the kings became weaker and poorer, and lootings in the Valley of the Kings increased. In the end, it was abandoned. The Valley of the Kings remained abandoned over the centuries, until the first explorers started once again to unveil its secrets. The tomb of Tutankhamun was the only tomb to be discovered in the Valley of the Kings for over 80 years. Since the tomb was found until today, King Tut is like hiding everything in the valley. And this is why no one ever tried to actually look at anything. And no one really had a theory, no archaeologist had a theory to think there is something. The valley, however, has still many secrets to share with us. In 2006, a team of archaeologists from the University of Memphis made an exceptional discovery, an intact tomb only 14 meters away from Tutankhamun. I went to the Valley of the Kings in December, and I went down, and I saw that he reached about three meters under the ground. Later, he called me to say that he found the entrance. That day, I will never forget. The opening of the entrance is an emotional event. When I looked, I couldn't see anything. The holes were even too small to let the light from the flashlight come into the tube. Uh, our photographer, Heather, looked. She thought she saw an outline of a coffin. And then a young man from Northern Ireland with us for the first time could get enough light where he could see these white big storage jars. And so he started yelling, I see pots, I see pots. At the foot of a five and a half meter deep shaft, there lies a chamber, which no human being has set eyes on for over 3,000 years. The entrance door has no seal whatsoever. The coffins are pushed into one corner, and one is on top of the others. Which dynasty does this tomb belong to, and who are these coffins for? Will the archaeologists find the mummy of a pharaoh inside? Before we can access the coffins, we need to remove the jars and see what's inside. The jars could provide us with precious clues and help us date the tomb. Inside the jars, the archaeologists find large quantities of natron, a salt used by the ancient Egyptians in the mummification process, and which is very good at absorbing water. As well as natron, there are animal bones, pieces of wood, bits of clay, bandages soaked in resin, mud seals, and fragments of pottery. It is one of these fragments which gives hope to the team. Wine jar fragments, which was found in jar number three, the big storage jar. And it's got a year five, it gives no name of the king, a year five, and it's wine of Charu. It's interesting because there's also wine from Charu found in Tutankhamun's tomb, and it's also from year five. Is KV-63 therefore connected in some way to KV-62, the tomb of Tutankhamun? In order to confirm this theory, we need more evidence, some clue, maybe an inscription with the name of a pharaoh. 
Once the jars have been removed, the archaeologists can at last move on to examining the coffins. They found that the coffins were completely deteriorated. The wood was in a very bad condition. Then I brought an Egyptian team under Nadia Lokma and they began to do a good work in the consolidation of the wood. Nadia Lukma, conservator for the Cairo Museum, is faced with a nearly impossible task. In that time, we saw that there are seven coffins in a horrible situation. Oh my goodness, it was horrible. The termites eat most of the wood, because you see, the termites eat what's inside, and we just leave the other uh, surface. The wood consolidation process requires days of work. And inside the coffin there was uh, pieces of pottery and stone and, and fabric and many things. And most of the things are inorganic. The climate inside the tomb it was extremely dry. It was 17% and this is very low. So the wood tried to shrink because it absorbed the water and give the water. So it tried to shrink. Wood, he can't shrink because what inside it, it was stable in, in, the, in the size. So, in a closed space like that and deep, it was horrible. The situation, it wasn't, I mean, for work, it wasn't easy. I mean, we are deep and we use too much material because we have to use a lot of consolidation material and very dilute. Hawass and Shaden try to date the coffins. So this is typical dynasty. Leaning on top of the others, there is a smaller coffin, half open, in good condition. What will we find inside? We need to move it in order to open it. It's a very delicate operation. The coffin is precariously balanced, and the slightest misjudgment could make it fall. Do you want to move the cover? Shard moves the cover. The team holds its breath. Inside the coffin, there are six pillows pressed down to the bottom. Underneath the pillows, we find an unexpected surprise. are no inscriptions, neither on the coffinet nor on the coffin that contains it. Who have they been prepared for then? In my opinion, this coffinet could be for the burial of an infant. thing that makes me think is 18 Dynasty is where it was found and the things found with it. And this is by far the best preserved of all the coffins we have. It even sounds like wood when you knock on it. We wouldn't dare do that with the others. They would just crumble. This one certainly looks like it should be a female. After finding the precious golden coffinet, it's time to open the last coffin. What will it contain? Will there be a mummy inside? Will it at long last unveil the secrets of KV-63? Journalists are standing ready to capture this event. But there is no mummy inside the coffin. The coffin is full of garlands of flowers. Look, look how they, different plants, not the same kind of plant. This is something, and this is something else, and this is something else. 
The ancient Egyptians used to place garlands of flowers around the necks of their dead. The lotus flower was a symbol of rebirth. The first time uh, for me as an archaeologist to look inside and see stored colors that they put it in the chest of the deceased. At the end, still you can see the flower. Natron salts, pillows, linen bandages, garlands of flowers, coffins without any mummies. Maybe KV-63 isn't actually a real tomb. Things found inside the coffins, some of them, they include pottery and materials uh, virtually identical to what was found in KV-54, which was an, an embalming cache. We don't know what KV-63 was originally meant for, but it certainly ended up as what looks like an embalming cache. So when, when the ancient Egyptians mummified their dead and had their funerals, anything that was part of that became sacred in some way and couldn't just be tossed away. It had to be reburied ritually. But why did the ancient Egyptians mummify bodies? How important was mummification? In order for the deceased to make a successful transition to the afterlife, it was essential that his or her body be properly mummified, a process which took approximately 70 days. The first step consisted of removing the organs from the body by cutting open the abdomen. The lungs, stomach, intestine and liver were washed, soaked in natron to dry, and then placed in special containers called canopic jars, which were decorated with the four sons of Horus, god of the sun. But they take the brain, because if you leave the brain inside the mummy, the brain can be damaged. And that's why they go through the nose and they send some thin material inside and they take the brain out. After that, they leave the heart in the body, because heart is a place of knowledge. It gives knowledge to the deceased in the afterlife. After that, they take the body and they close everything open in the body of the deceased, like his uh, nose, like uh, areas inside hair. And after that, they completely clean and wash the body completely with uh, wine that made of dates. The body was kept in natron for 40 days. Natron absorbed any water. Once this had been done, the body was completely dehydrated and was wrapped in linen bandages. Good luck charms were placed between the layers of the bandaging. The mummy was now ready to be placed into the coffin. Mummification was an extremely important process for the ancient Egyptians, which had to be carried out with the utmost care. Because they believed they have to preserve the body for a long time. Because this time inside the tomb is for eternal life. I shall not decay, nor rot, nor putrefy, nor become worms, nor see corruption. I shall have my being, I shall live, I shall flourish, I shall rise up in peace. KV-63 may therefore have been a storeroom for materials used in the mummification process. As far as we know now, it's an embalming cache, like KV-54, which is the embalming cache for Tutankhamun. But who does it belong to? These caskets, why they fill it with natural salts and this stuff for the embalmers? 
This coven should be connected with somebody from the time of Tutankhamun, I mean, if he's the same thing. Because, you know, we don't know exactly why they put these coffins here and why they used them as embalmer uh, cache. This, it was a little bit. Why dig a five meter deep shaft underground just for a storeroom? My theory that this tomb originally to be the tomb of the mother of King Tut here, because we know that she died when she was delivering him. And this is why you have the mask, it's similar to King Tut, and also King Tut himself, when he was, died, he decided to be buried near his mother. It's a theory, but it can be wrong, it can be correct, but in archaeology you have to build theories based on some evidence. I think, I hope, and I hope it's right, that the money which were in this coffin, we will find them. I think it must be, this, this tomb have some, some place else, it must be something else. The discovery of KV-63 adds a new piece to the intricate puzzle that is the history of ancient Egypt. Another big mystery is solved a year later. On the 27th of June 2007, Zahi Hawass announces that he has identified the mummy of Queen Hatshepsut, the first female pharaoh, the fifth queen of the 18th dynasty. According to experts, this has been the greatest archaeological discovery since the tomb of Tutankhamun. An Egyptian team uh, did find the mummy of, uh, of Queen Hatshepsut. Hawass and his team made this discovery after examining four unidentified mummies. Three were on the third floor of the Cairo Museum, and one was inside the KV-62 in the Valley of the Kings, which belonged to Hatshepsut's wet nurse, Sitra Inn. Archaeologists carried out CT scans and DNA testing on the four mummies. The key to one of the biggest riddles in Pharaoh history was actually a molar tooth, kept in a wooden box in Deir el-Bakhari, Hatshepsut's mortuary complex. That mummy found lying on the floor of KV-60 with a folded left arm and a closed fist resting on her chest as a symbol of royalty was missing exactly that, a molar tooth. After carrying out careful analysis, experts came to a much-awaited conclusion. The tooth found in the box exactly matched the mummy's missing tooth. The team found inside one of the box that tooth, that losing one root of the tooth, and uh, radiologists and scientists identified this with one of the mummies. This mummy is what remains of Queen Hatshepsut on this earth. An exceptional discovery, yet another confirmation that there are many more stories to come from the thousands of years of Pharaoh's civilization. According to Zahi Hawass, only 30% of the treasures of ancient Egypt have been uncovered. The Valley of the Kings is still holding on to many secrets, all waiting to be disclosed. Some archaeologists are convinced that the mummy of Queen Nefertiti, the most beautiful woman in the world, is resting in one of the tombs in the valley. Since KB-63 lies in the Valley of the Kings, archaeologists were of course hoping to find an intact tomb of some sort, preferably royal. Early speculation centered on Nefertiti because KV-63 lies not far from KV-55, which is a cache of reburied materials from Amarna, including most probably the body of her husband, Akhenaten. You can't be sure 100%. 
that the tomb of Nefertiti isn't the Val of the Kings. She could be buried in the Val of the Queens. She could be buried in Amarna. We really do not know. But as I'm saying, that the future excavation maybe will reveal some ideas about the tomb of Nefertiti. Then we still have to reveal lots of mysteries. In the next episode, I'm not taking you to one of my sites to see discoveries, but the unique discoveries now is going to be in the basement of the Cairo Museum. We'll take pottery away, statues, we'll open cases and discover mamas and statues for the first time in the basement of the Cairo Museum. Wait for this.